Hey, Assumption Classmates, it's John DiPietro, and um, it's April, and here we are just a couple months away from our 50th anniversary. I don't know about you, but I can't believe that it's been 50 years. Actually, it's 54 years since we started at Assumption in um, September of 1968. So here's why I'm writing this note uh, on behalf of my reunion committee colleagues. I can say that right. Reunion committee colleagues, Bob Hunter, Neil Burgess, and so many other people, uh, Bob Hunter, Steve Densberger, Ed Neefsey. Um, I should have the list in front of me, but I forgot to get it. But um, we all want to see you guys back on June 9th and 10th. And um, very shortly from the college, you'll be, re be receiving the official entry form to uh, send back. But um, what I did back during those all four years at Assumption, whenever we had a flyer that was sent out from the dean's office, um, you know, into our mailboxes, I, like this, I kind of saved it. And not knowing that 50 years later, it would bring back amazing memories. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff here I'll show you photos of, but a couple of things that I want to um, focus on this particular email video is this. Class class meeting minutes from November 2nd, 1970. And I'll read it to you. The meeting was called to order at 7 p.m. for the 19 class members present by President Jack Bershani. Minutes of the last class meeting and a financial report were given by John DePietro. That would be me. I indicated that the profits from the party of October 2nd amounted to $120. I don't know whether that's beer money, whether it's admission money or whatever, but it's a 20, 120 bucks. And there presently is $212 in the class account. Next, Al Tolero, the junior representative to the SPPC. I think that stands for Student Personnel Policy Committee, reported on the committee activity. He mentioned that through the work of the committee, the sign-in sheet for parietal hours has been discontinued. Major accomplishment. Fike Falsetti, not Mike Falsetti, but Fike Falsetti, social chairman. That was before the term social chairperson existed. Expressed the possibility of opening a bar on campus so you didn't have to drink in your rooms. Presently, there is one operating at Stonehill. He made a visit there recently and indicated that the situation looks good for starting one here. Interested students should contact him for further information. Another party is being planned for November 20th. It is hoped that this can be a country western affair with appropriate attire. Don't remember that. Continuing, Bill Wiles, former member of the Academic Affairs Committee, commented on the proposed calendar and academic reforms that have been posted around campus. He indicated that these were the work of Jack Nyham without the help or approval of other committee members. It looks like there's controversy here. A complete report of the situation was presented in the last issue of the Provocateur. He stated that Bob Mills and Terry Mack, both juniors, resigned from the committee due to the tactics employed by Jack Nyhan. The senators present discussed SGA activity so far this year as the final topic of the meeting, which was adjourned at 7.45. So we got that all done in 45 minutes. So that was one thing. I also found some flyers. Hopefully this will be visible to you. It says Cactus and the Young Bloods in concert at the Assumption Gym. <laughs> Two shows, 4 and 8 p.m. Freaks in advance, 3.50. Everyone else at the door, $4. <laughs> Tickets available all over the place. So that was that. Then I picked up a copy of The Provocateur somewhere here. This Provocateur, which interestingly doesn't have a date on it. Oh, December 21st, 1971. So that must have been senior year. And I read a story. AC's Whitensville Entry. A group of determined Assumption College students have recently organized and entered a basketball team in the Whitensville Community Center Basketball League. 
The, here is this roster. The roster is talent-laden. Indeed, with the likes of Bobby Austin, general manager, Mike Parachuk, player coach, Ed Neefsey, captain, Rick Lincoln, Brian Jerome, Dennis Ferrante, Jack Taglia, Larry Trombley, Frank Sidlow, and Reed Willis. Not to be confused with Willis Reed. Okay, Mr. Joseph Garvey, the owner and proprietor of Leitrim Pub, has graciously agreed to sponsor the team, along with providing beautiful new uniforms. So far, the team has been quite successful. In their season opener, Leitrim Pub defeated Ronnie's Auto Body, defending champions, 69-67, to on a 20-footer by Bob Austin with four seconds left on the clock. It was a victory in the Assumption College tradition as eight players figured in the victory with four scoring in double figures. So it went on to say that um, the league is also um, includes several graduates of Holy Cross, Assumption, Clark, Providence, Boston College, Boston University, and UMass. So that's that story there. And I found another story which was kind of interesting and it was Assumption College versus, actually, this is the program, Providence College versus Assumption College in 1970. So the Assumption lineup, starting lineup on offense, Ralph Bartley at center, Mike Hoban at guard, Zoll Roy at guard, Vin Britt at tackle, Bernie Reich at tackle, Jim Smoley at end, Joe Parmakian at end, Mike Fleming, Mick Fleming, Halfback, Steve Green, halfback, Bob Doyle, whatever F means, fullback, and Phil Lamar, quarterback. And moving over to defense, Paul Cochran, Steve Lindbergh, Bill Pakulis, Ed Albanese, Paul Tessick, Kevin McNeil, Rich Quagliaroli, Al Agby, Frank Frontera, Ed Mahan, and Ty Smith was the safety. One other thing that I found was very interesting in this um, locker, foot locker full of stuff, was this thing that appeared in the Assumption, uh, in the Worcester Telegram. It was the Assumption College Special Report, Assumption College 65th Anniversary Report. And it's got pictures of the chapel and all that other stuff. But there's pictures here, and we found one of our own Bob Hunter, Number 19, what does it say here? He would, he could be a star on the team getting set for preseason practice or just a fan. That was what it says about Bob Hunter. But nobody knew that he would become manager extraordinaire and still to this day, the only person to win the Al Banks Award twice in the same season. So there are some other people here that maybe you know um, that I can see. Uh, who else? Oh, there's Helen Sia, Dave Harvey, Melanie. Remember when Melanie came to Assumption? Uh, Joe Araby, Jim Weslowski, and his not yet wife, who I think is still his wife about 50 years later. And there's a picture of the campus, which is just a <laughs> much, much smaller than it is right now. And it talked about all the things that were going on. And... Um, co-education, and there was a new building that was supposed to be built, that 20-story building that still to this day has never been built. So that's some of the stuff. And then there's provocateurs um, that we'll get into in our next edition. But I want to thank you so much for um, spending this time this morning, today, whenever you read this, day, night. Actually, you won't read it. You'll view it. Um. And remember, June 9th and 10th, come on back to Assumption. Have a great day, everybody.